Hello, in this video we're look, going to look at the dispersion relation for the unstaggered forward-backward finite difference scheme. So that's we're going to look at how waves propagate, the speed of which waves propagate with this unstaggered or co-located method. So in order to find the dispersion relation we'll need the amplification factor which we found in the last video. The amplification factor for this um, 1D method is, is this expression here. And the argument of the complex, this complex number gives us the wave frequency as a function of wave number. So the argument of this complex number is uh, this value here, the tan inverse to get the angle. Uh, you, this can be simplified. Uh, if we assume that c over 2 sine k delta x is equal to sine alpha, uh, you could uh, pause the video and substitute this into here and try to simplify that expression. You should get this value here that um, now the frequency is plus or minus 2 alpha, so that's plus or minus 2 inverse sine of c over 2 sine k delta rex. Um, so this is the dispersion relation, that's the wave frequency as a function of wave number. Um, and we can plot that in comparison to the wave frequency of the analytical solution. The analytical solution has got wave frequency proportional to k delta rex, this line here. Um, so this is increasing wave number, so these are higher and higher uh, wave number waves. Um, whereas the A grid, or unstaggered method, gives this dispersion relation here. So what does this mean when um, k delta x over pi equals 1? This is a grid scale wave. If you, if you plot a wave um, with wave number k and then look at how delta x um, is related to that. If you've got k delta x equals 1, you've got a grid scale wave, um, which is the um, uh, highest wave number you can represent on that grid. Um, so what's happening here is that grid scale waves have zero frequency. They don't propagate. This is extremely unrealistic. If we think about what this means in terms of a, of a solution, um, this we might have an initial condition for h prime that looks like this. So these are the um, grid points here, and we've got uh, minus plus minus plus. So we've got a grid scale wave. So this has got k delta x equals pi. We're initializing the model with zero velocity everywhere. So questions to think about: If we were solving the analytical shallow water equations with these analytical solutions, um, how would we expect the linearized shallow water equations to evolve? Well, we'd get waves, we'd get high frequency waves that would propagate in both directions, um, and the solution would oscillate between having non zero h prime and non zero u. And you can imagine um, waves in a uh, ripples in a pond starting off like this. It doesn't stay still. Um, whereas, what will happen to the solution of the 1D A grid forward backward scheme? How will this solution evolve? We start off with these initial conditions. Um, or we can think about this by going back to the um, equation for the numerical method. So we've got, um, we, first of all, we want to calculate the change in u. The change in u, so we're going to go back to these equations here. The change in u is related to the height gradient. So let's see what height gradients we've got. Uh, height gradient to this point here is, so it, it's centred, that one minus that one, it's zero. Height gradient here is, again, it's zero, because it's that one minus that one. Um, so the velocity isn't going to change. There are no height gradients at the places where the velocity is stored. So let's see how, the, how h changes. h is related to the velocity gradients. Um, so will h change? H is, change in h is given by the change in u. u is zero, and it hasn't changed in the first time step. So um, u is not going to change either. The solution is never going to change. If you initialize that laser, it'll stay like that forever. So um, the grid scale wave in h prime will remain. Uh, no non-zero u will be generated. So this, is, this is, is the same answer as what we got from the dispersion relation, that the grid scale waves don't propagate. They don't move at all. This, is, this does not seem ideal, and in the next lecture we're going to look at a solution to this problem.